This installment of Technically Sleeping will talk about acute pain scoring. Why should we be pain scoring our patients? The best explanation I have for this is not by me, but another anesthesiologist who wrote, imagine the treatment of your pain is in the hands of someone who neither speaks your language nor understands what it is to be human. You are at the mercy of that individual. That well-meaning individual could undertreat your pain and leave you in agony or overtreat your pain, leaving you groggy, dysphoric, nauseous, etc. Assessment is the only way your caregiver can effectively and dynamically manage your comfort. Another way to say this is that there is no gold standard for animal pain assessment. Obviously, we can't ask our patients if they're in pain. So we need a tool, the pain scale, to objectively assess and recognize animal pain. This allows for non-experts to more objectively recognize and communicate animal pain. So if you have a brand new technician on the floor looking at the patient, they should be able to recognize animal pain and tell the veterinarian on the case that the animal is in pain. A pain scale allows this to happen. We should be pain scoring whenever pain is present or anticipated and frequently. So consider the duration of analgesic drug you're giving and acknowledge that different animals respond differently to different drugs. Some animals are more sensitive than others. Some get really sleepy for an extended period of time. Some are painful within a few hours of the dose. A perfect pain scale has some properties to it, including validity. Validity asks, does the pain score measure what it's supposed to? Then there's reliability. Reliability is important. If technician A does the pain scale, do they get the same number as technician B? Responsiveness, also important. The scale needs to be sensitive enough to detect clinically important changes. So if an animal is determined to be painful, and you give an analgesic that fixes the problem, does the scale reflect that? Then there's utility. How easy is the scale to use? You can imagine if your ICU is filled to the brim with patients, a very cumbersome pain scale is not going to encourage compliance in using it. And versatility would be nice, so can the scale be applied to different scenarios? Can it apply to all the different species you have in your ICU? Can it apply to different types of pain, the orthopedic patients, the soft tissue patients, the neurologic patients? Intervention is important. A lot of pain scales will have an intervention score where above this number, we know that additional analgesia is needed. The Glasgow Composite Pain Scale, which I'll talk about later, has an intervention scale, and this was well-researched. So there are many different types of pain scales and you've probably seen some out there. One kind of category of pain scales is a unidimensional pain scale. So this measures only one parameter, i.e. pain intensity, and they're very easy to use. On the right of the screen are some examples of unidimensional measures. So there's a simple descriptive scale. For example, on a scale from zero to three, how painful is an animal? While being easy to use, a problem with this is that it's not very sensitive. So what is the difference between a one and a two? There's probably some animals that theoretically could be 1.5, 1.7, experiencing different levels of pain that this kind of scale would not pick up. So the numerical rating scale has more numbers in it. So you could argue is more sensitive. There could be a big difference between a three out of 10 and a five out of 10. Problem with this is that it's very subjective. And then finally, there's a visual analog scale where you have a 100 millimeter line and then you tick where you think the animal lies on this. The problem with these is that while they have been found to be reliable, they are much more reliable for experienced evaluators. This does not apply to your new graduate technician who's on the floor trying to assess pain. The Colorado State University Canaan Acute Pain Scale is really popular. I used it when I was in school. I see it everywhere. The Colorado State University Pain Scale never claimed to be a validated pain scale. 
It is a teaching tool designed to help train veterinary professionals in pain assessment by raising awareness of species and pain specific behavioral changes. It is not a validated pain assessment scale and was not intended to be such. The best application of this tool is in developing students' observational skills and interpretive capacity based on their growing clinical knowledge. So nobody ever claimed that this was a validated pain scale, and yet it's so easy to use, its use is very common. The Glasgow Composite Pain Scale short form is another type of pain scale, a little bit more complicated than the Colorado State Pain Scale. It is multidimensional in that you can see that there are different categories. So there's observing the animal in the kennel. There is interacting with the animal by taking it out, touching the painful area, and then an overall assessment. It includes things like vocalization, attention to the painful area, mobility, response to touch, and demeanor. And again, it has an intervention score, either six out of 24 or five out of 20 for non-ambulatory animals. A research study backed up what was the appropriate intervention score. So what about cats? All the scales I talked about, except for the unidimensional scales, apply to dogs. There is also a Colorado State version of a feline pain scale, but we know that this was never intended to be a validated pain scale. So a group at Minnesota looked at this pain scale to see, is it valid, can we use it? And unfortunately, the validity fell short of current guidelines for correlation coefficients and further refinement and testing are warranted to improve its performance. In correlation coefficients, what that means is that Observer A and Observer B probably didn't get similar enough answers as to whether or not an animal was painful. There is another feline pain score. It was established in Brazil, I think it was, and then translated from Portuguese to English, and the English translation was then validated. It is very valid in that lots of people get, if they decide an animal is painful, it's pretty close to predicting animal pain. Very reliable, different observers get the same answer, responsive, and that you will get a decrease, for example, in pain score after analgesic is administered. The problem with this pain scale is that it's about three pages long, only applies to cats, and was only tested for cats getting spayed. So it's not entirely clear if this would be valid for cats, for example, who have orthopedic pain. And then a three-page pain scale is kind of daunting as well but you can see on the left here, a figure from the paper in animals that didn't have pain versus animals that did. There's a very stark cutoff point at seven of animals who had pain higher than seven with their score versus animals who didn't have pain score less than seven. There is also a Glasgow composite pain scale for cats and it is multidimensional as well. There's many different categories, and one of the categories includes these faces that you can see on the left. So a painful cat will exhibit a grimace, just as a painful human, for example, will. If you've seen that episode of Family Guy, you can see Peter is grimacing because he fell over and hurt his knee. In the cat, ear distance, for example, is one way that a cat is showing it's painful with its grimace. Another example of this is their whisker, being taut, so kind of farther apart rather than floating downwards. This grimace scale was added to the Glasgow Composite Pain Scale recently and helped to bring validity to the pain scale. So what's with the faces? When people hear of this for the first time of grimace scales, they're a little bit skeptical, but they're actually really common. For example, in lab animal medicine, there's a validated version for mice, for rabbits and for rats. There's a pig grimace scale as well, a horse grimace scale, and a sheep grimace scale. So the takeaways from this lecture are that you should be pain scoring your patients. There are a lot of different animal pain scales. I only talked about acute pain scales, but chronic pain scales also exist. The best pain scale that you can use is one that's validated and also easy to use because that's the most practical.